Once the bushing shell has been installed in the lower control arm, you stake it in three positions. I use this high-tech tool right here. It's a piece of metal. And that's what we're looking for. We need to do that three times on each shell insert. And what this does is it keeps the bearing shell from working its way out. Like, not that it would. There is, after all, a large washer and a large nut that go onto the end of the shaft that runs through this bushing. But uh, it also probably helps keep the shell from rotating. Under no circumstances would you ever want this bearing shell to start articulating. Um, that would wear out in no time flat, and that would cause a major problem. Uh, everything would still be attached to the truck. You know, it wouldn't be a safety issue, but it would uh, your handling would go to poop, and uh, nobody wants that. So we put in one shell and a polyurethane. On the other side, I've got just the shell installed. Now, you can't put the bearing, bearing, we'll edit that out in post. You can't uh, put the rest of it in yet because the shaft, that's how you install the shaft. And the shaft is going to go in here. The shaft will go all the way through. And it goes into that side, right? Of course, we're missing one thing. This guy. We have more about this guy in a moment. Final assembly is not too difficult. This gets inserted into the poly bushing. And then the shaft, of course, gets inserted in that. We have one side fully assembled, and the other side we have just the shell put in place. And that's because the shaft has to come through here, and then we put the bushing and stuff in from this side. What lubricant to use? We have two bearing surfaces that are going to be sliding that need to be lubricated. The, the, Polyurethane to metal, right there. This is going to spin, right? And then the shaft in within this will spin. The original bushings that came on the truck, the ends of this is, are serrated. Some of the aftermarket ones are as well. And I think the idea is to limit the shaft moving inside of this and to keep all of the action happening between the rubber and the bushing that's wishful thinking you're going to have articulation on both of them the only thing you want to avoid is uh, this shell needs to be staked in place and we want nothing moving there that will wear out in short order so so we have two services what what lubricant to use now the polyurethane if we don't want it to squeak, and some will tell you they always squeak, and they they do. They there's a certain amount of squeaking um, that you're just gonna have to live with. But to limit the amount of squeaking, manufacturers grease. Why would they sell you the wrong stuff? They want you to be happy with your bushings. This is a silicone. This is a silicone grease. That they provide and I see no reason not to use it now people swear by Silk Glide and guess what it's a silicone uh, lubricant which in my mind is going to be very similar to this there's a hack however it's gone around the internet and that's to use PTFE or just you know Teflon tape and you wrap one thickness only because it's not going to fit otherwise. One thickness only. 
of this tape around here and then uh, with the regular silicone so we're going to use the silicone grease we're going to lube it all up everything like normal there is we can see grooves right within the the bushing and those grooves are just to retain the grease so you can have a little bit of grease uh, in there because there's not much clearance but what about the second articulation what about the shaft within this that's going to spin also. A couple of words I have about this. First, this is not a de particularly demanding situation as far as lubrication goes. Yes, it's extremely important. Uh, this holds the front suspension onto the vehicle and we prefer it to to remain attached to the vehicle while we're flying down the highway or the drag strip or wherever you do your driving. The grease you use is not going to make any difference for that. This is an extremely non-demanding application as far as grease goes. Um, the, the problem is actually one of longevity of keeping the grease in place rather than the performance of the grease. Uh, starting off, you could probably use Vaseline and it would work fine. You know, that wouldn't hold up over time because it'd end up getting washed away. So what you want is something that's going to be first and foremost waterproof and anti-corrosion. So where does that leave us? Well, we're using silicone grease on the outside of this. But the way this is set up, there's virtually no commingling of the lubricants so you could use a different grease on the inside and why would we want to do this this silicone grease is not my first choice for a metal to metal bushing that isn't what I would use what would I use well I tell you what I'm gonna use Redline CB2 synthetic now, this is a high performance grease it's EP, it has red molly. It's good if you believe the, the literature for just about everything. Wheel bearings, constant velocity joints, and other high speed bearings. 500 degrees, not a problem. How many of these extreme conditions are going to be seen by this bushing? None. <laughs> so, the positives for using this synthetic grease. It's pretty thick. It's very water resistant. Uh, and those are the most important things. Also, the EP isn't a bad thing. This is subject to a lot of weight. Uh, and with a very thin film, right? There's not a lot of room so, you know, every little bit will help out. Most importantly is, um, in my experience, it resists washout pretty well. It's not bad for um, using as a chassis loop because of this. Because it, uh, it really does re uh, resist being washed out. These are uh, not really greasable. Uh, once it's assembled, it's like, how do you get more grease in there? I've considered drilling and tapping the shell here for uh, a zerk fitting, thinking that perhaps I could, uh, you know, lube, lube it. Uh, the only problem is what you're going to tap into is the exterior, the, the poly to, to sleeve uh, interface there. You're not going to get to the inside of this. And that's a problem as far as re-greasing it goes. And we have a shaft running through here, a big shaft. And so, you know, drilling that is, is out of the question. Um, so basically, this is a lube it up and assemble it and you're good to go. Um, it is possible to to grease it after the fact. Okay, so 
what we have is you have a large washer that covers this and a nut, right? And if you remove the nut and the washer, you could use a, you know, a needle to inject some kind of grease in there. And am I going to do any of that? Mm, no. What I want is to be able to assemble it and have it stay greased for a long time. I think this is going to do it for me. Now, people are going to say, but two greases, uh, you're going to have cross-contamination. and I'm not worried uh, for several reasons. One, like I said, the way the bearing is set up, the, the chances are very little. There's going to be very little cross-contamination of the grease. This isn't a high-speed bearing. There's not lube moving around. It's a control arm that has a very limited range of motion and uh, I think that we're fine as far as that goes um, secondly I don't really have a second lane that's it I don't think there's gonna be a problem with them mixing together so there you go so I'm gonna do it and if it is a problem you can say I told you so <laughs> how about that Now to get it started, a couple of blows with a soft blow hammer. The important thing is that it's straight. Very important for it to be straight. I'm going to take the, uh, this assembly. This goes to the top. And the screw of the ball joint will pass through it. That's the receiver. And then this is the pusher. It'll all make sense. So what we'll do is, well, it'll make sense if I show it in the frame. Huh? So we got those adapters, top and bottom, and then this is the receiver. And what it does is the receiver comes down here, goes on like that, and then we put that C-clamp over the ball joint and we press it down into this receiver. And that's it. Easy as it is. Piece cake. Well, this is the basic setup for pressing in the ball joint. We have one of these ball joint service tools. Better if you have air power. It's not necessary. You can do it with the old elbow grease. It just takes longer. And it consists of various little adapters and rings and things and you stack them. So either remove or in this case press into service ball joint and we just uh, put the superhuman strength on it uh, and uh, well, with both hands to hold it it's worse a little better <laughs> secure this in a vice children basically just presses you see we have a receiving cup the ball joint is inside of there it's going down Pressing down, and uh, we press it until it's flat with the metal, and then all these adapters just like fall off, and uh, it's pressed into place. Bob's your uncle. I've lubed this shaft with uh, some synthetic EP lube, and uh, it makes me feel better. I don't want it to be galled or to seize up or to be harder than it already is. Believe me, it takes a uh, you got to put the elbow grease, it's the other kind of grease you have to use on this thing. Works better if it starts going in a little crooked or. Uh, you just want to exercise your frustrations. I, I give it a little tap, and uh, you know, it just fell into place. So we're in. Yeah, after that, it just uh, a couple more easy turns, and uh, it just slid into place the last uh, millimeter or two. Now we take this off, hopefully without destroying everything. There we go. You can see it's a little insertion tool. It's the ball joint. Ah! <laughs> Post production. We'll edit that out. And the, the cup, the receiving cup, and the ball joint is indeed in place. Super simple. <laughs>